Hey guys, how's it going? Sam here. So today we're going to be looking at how to create custom brushes. I've had several messages on YouTube on what brushes I'm using or how they can be created. And to be honest with you, I've always bought brushes or downloaded them. I've done a video on it previously talking about sparfs and I've never really found the time to mess around and create some on my own. So that's what I'm going to do today. It's going to be a little bit of an experiment and hopefully it will show you all the process to create your own brushes and get exactly what you're looking for out of them. So I'm starting off with a blank document on Photoshop and uh, the, the only thing that needs to be specified, I think you can do it any size you want, um, it just needs to be square. So the first thing we need to do is create some kind of stamp or pattern that we can use as a brush. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to start off, there's no point in me using different brushes to create new brushes, so I'm going to start off with the default Photoshop brushes and I'm going to use Kyle's Ultimate Pastel Pencil, I think it is. I'm just to, to create a shape, colour doesn't really matter. I've got a few brushes where they're this kind of almost like a stone shape, so I'm going to create something like that. The good thing about using this brush is the edges are not uh, hard, and one of the thing, main things to note is that it's not a solid line on the outside, which I think will give you some nice painterly texture and feel. So first of all I'm going to do it completely full, so the inside is completely filled. I'm just going to centre that, and I'm going to turn off the background layer so we've got a PNG. Okay, now I'm actually going to turn that just to black and then I'm going to go edit, define somewhere here, define brush preset, click that. The brush name doesn't really matter currently so just click OK. And as you can see I've now got my brush. So I've got a document open which is slightly larger, I'm going to create a new layer. And as you can see it's a solid brush, it's, it's quite nice, I mean you can probably use this for some some designs, but that's not really what we're going for. So we're going to go into uh, slightly more detail on the settings now and work out if we can get this to be usable. The first thing I'm going to do is go to the very top next to where you can see the brush icon. There's this little panel, click that, it's a brush folder, and it brings up all of your brush settings. So as you can see, uh, by default shape dynamics is turned on, and that basically means when I apply more pressure with the brush, it will create a taper based on my opacity. So the harder I press, the more full the brush will become, which is great. I think that's a really good setting to use. The next thing I want to have a look at, I mean, I'll kind of go through a lot of these or the ones I'm going to use. So something to bear in mind, you can adjust the minimum diameter. So as you can see at the icon at the bottom, the larger the diameter, uh, the larger the brush will start. So if you uh, press it at 0% it will come from a perfect point um, and that's what I tend to use to be honest with you. This is something I recommend you testing out yourself and seeing what works. I'm not going to go through every setting, just play around yourself. That's the whole point of this exercise is just to play around. So scattering, again if you play around with this yourself, this kind of is great for particle effects, that kind of thing, but it's not something I'm looking for with this brush. Texture is something I'm going to add and I'll come back to that. Transfer, now this is something I'm definitely going to add. So you can add the opacity based on pen pressure. So the lighter I press, the um, less opacity the brush will have, which I think is a really good setting to use. Okay. So by clicking brush tip shape at the very top, you've got spacing. Now this you want to keep it as high as you possibly can while still getting the smoothness that you want because the lower the spacing is going to be, the harder it's going to be on your computer. So if you've got a big powerhouse of a computer, absolutely fine, set it to zero or one percent. It will be great, but as soon as you start adding texture and bring the spacing down, it's really going to slow down. So if I go too far, if I go to 30, you can see how it, almost as if it's a, a block printing each time I, I draw the line, which again might be what you're looking for. If you're trying to create tire tracks um, or chains, then changing your spacing is really useful. But for me, I want a smooth brush. So 7% is not bad. Let's maybe bring it down to four. Four is pretty good, maybe 3%. 
there you go, that's what I'm looking for. So you can see I've got a smooth line on the outsides. And already this brush I think is usable. You can create probably by adjusting the size, you've got a nice brush to draw with. And then with the pressure sensitivity, I feel like I'll have quite a lot of control uh, to add everything that I want to. So we've got this brush. Now if you want to save it, click the little plus icon at the bottom. Um, then you can rename the brush. So for this, I'm just going to go test one, click OK. And that's great. That's I think that's a good brush. So we've already got that one saved and that will be useful. So let's uh, look at what else I can do. Uh, something else that I wanted to look at was color dynamics, which I think is quite interesting. This is something that Sparf uses quite regularly with his brushes. So as you can see here, the settings Hue jitter 2%, saturation 2%, brightness jitter 0, purity minus 1, I think that can be 0. And that creates a really subtle effect. So what it's going to do is going to take colours in a um, similar hue and similar saturation. So the, the higher you raise your saturation, the more variable, the more, more change there'll be in your saturation, and the same with the hue. So if I whack the hue up to 80%, as you can see, you get this rainbow effect which for me is not what I want. And if you hit saturation up to 80%, as you can see, you get various different saturations and values, which again is not what I want. So I'm looking for kind of 2% and maybe 0% on hue, which will give me this really subtle, subtle changes in color, which I think can be really useful. Like I said, something I found with sparse brushes that I found just add a little bit more detail when you're creating a painting than a flat color. So if I was to turn this off and paint the full color, that's fine. But then if I turn it back on and paint the exact same color, you get this subtle pattern, which I think is really, really nice. You're not, not everyone's gonna love this and not everyone's gonna wanna use this in their paintings, but I've found for certain paintings, if you've seen my painting with the lasso, lasso tool, still don't know how to say it, uh, I uh, use that quite a lot, so it's worth bearing in mind. So again, click in the plus button, go test um, hue jitter. And then I've saved that brush, so now I can change between the two. Now I use um, another shout out to Brusherator. This little icon over here has all my standard brushes on that I use quite regularly. So going back to, as you can see, I have so many brushes, I need to delete most of them because I don't use 99% so I've got this brush up as you can see I'm gonna go plus on there add button from active tool um, and then I'm gonna use the text label test you just uh, click finish it's gonna create the icon and then I can move this around so as, as you can lay out this so I can have um, this test here and then go back to it and my brush is there so I found rather than looking for all your brush presets this is a great tool, it's not free, but um, worth buying. So the last thing I'm going to show you now is we've got this brush. We're going to look at using texture. So I have found this image online. I've um, made it um, black and white. You want to make the adjustments for the uh, levels. So bring up the level and uh, you want a good variance in contrast. Test this yourself, um, do several different variants using some kind of texture brush, click OK. The texture can be absolutely anything. You can use a gritty pattern, you can use you know, sand, dirt. Again, this is part of the fun play around. This is just obviously oil paint. I'm going to go to edit and then define pattern. Click OK, go back to where you've got your brush open, click the brush settings and then click on texture, hit down the thing, and then you'll, you'll notice the pattern will pop up. Now immediately it's not going to do much. So when you first turn it on, you probably won't see a difference. First thing when you want to change from mode, uh, you can choose darken or multiply. As you can see, it's immediately changed that image. So what you might see is somewhere around here. Um, you'll see subtle around the edges of it maybe, you'll get this kind of nice pattern. Adjusting the brightness will change how much it's visible. So if you go really strong, you get this kind of pattern, which again, for certain techniques, if you're creating an oil painting, that might be useful. But as you can see, because it's using the pattern, 
when it's that strong, I can't fill in those whites, no matter what angle I come at, no matter how many times I draw over it. That white background will not get filled in because of the pattern, so you've got to be careful of that. So adjusting the brightness to where it's visible, but not completely opaque is great because it means you can go over and fill, but then you can still get that texture in um, where you want it. So maybe a little bit more than that, maybe somewhere around there. Um, and I found this this way of adding texture is a great way. As you can see, I can still remove that texture if I want to just by going over the top of it because there is some opacity. It's not completely void of the pattern. Um, so I found this technique a, a great way to, to create these kind of textured brushes that I think a lot of you are looking for. And as you can see, it's really quick. You can do it in less than five minutes yourself. You don't have to pay for any brushes. If you're going to buy brushes from someone, this is all they're doing. They're just experimenting. They're playing around with these brush tools and uh, finding some really interesting things from them. So there we have it guys, just a quick video just to show you how you can create brushes. This is not really something that I've done in the past, so you can see even someone that hasn't done it before, it's a really quick easy process. By messing around with the uh, properties in Photoshop and by using different textures and different shaped brushes in your initial pattern, I think you can create basically anything, it's um, you know the sky's the limit. So. And one last note that I'd like to add, just remember that the brush does not create the painting. You need the fundamental skill to know how to use those brushes. So watching artists that use these amazing brushes, just remember it's a flourish on an already developed skill set. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, but hopefully this video has been really useful for you. Let me know in the comments below. Gained so many more subscribers over the last month so anyone that's new subscriber here hasn't watched much of my content thank you so much for subscribing i really do appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video